Hi, uh, I'm Bilal Mbonichkeit. I am the co-founder for Directive. Uh, this video is a short introduction to Directive. Um, we're going to take you just through the basics of what Directive was all about, why we built it. Um, and it'll also be a follow, there'll also be follow on videos from this describing exactly how to use Directive and how to implement it in your environment and building basic workflows to use uh, in your environment, your platform, your public private cloud. Um, it doesn't really matter. Um, as always, if you want more questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'll link the GitHub page for Directive. There's also an open source Slack channel, or you can just send us an email directly. So on to the videos. So in this first uh, introduction, we're actually going to explain what Directive is, um, how you use Directive, and just the basic principles of the Directive solution. So firstly, what is Directive? Um, in, uh, in programming language and, pro and software development world, it's actually a construct in source code that indicates how things should be processed, but it's not necessarily part of the program that actually runs it. And if we look at what Directive is all about, it, this actually represents very clearly on what we do and how we do it. So Directive is a workflow engine. You can define technical workflows, business workflows, application or integration flows. Um, you can do this using the flow builder, which is the UI builder, or if you prefer to do it in a code base or well, a primitive state language, you can use YAML. But it's simple, fast, and it's easily consumable. And we made this uh, very simple for non-software developers to use, but also powerful enough for software developers to use themselves. Um, and in line with that, what we've done is we've built in things like enterprise support for logging, for policy control, authorization, error management, you know, catch error situation as an example in the screen, um, but also the ability to remediate these errors. But firstly, it is a workflow engine. The second thing that's important about Directive, it's, it's driven by events in the environment. So it is an event-driven architecture, an event-driven workflow solution or orchestration engine. Um, the reason we chose to do this using events is because we wanted to keep near real time. Um, event workflows also scale really easily as they are not bound by top end workflows or master workflows and obviously you have the benefit of asynchronous uh, capabilities. Now events themselves can come from the Knative eventing solution which is part of the Knative project out there and they've got a whole raft of resources you can use as um, sources event sources um, but we've also built in a cloud events listener and you can use this cloud event listener for custom event integration and these events get translated into workable events inside directive um, which can stop workflows start workflows branch off to other workflows um, really the event driven architecture of this workflow engine is what makes it so unique the third thing is everything about directive is serverless so we run on top of all the basic Kubernetes platforms and services out there. Um, the reason we chose the serverless framework is obviously because of the freedom it gives us to run it anywhere in any environment, public, private, cloud, it doesn't matter. But also there are really good resources for interact, integrating code, um, containers and process pretty seamlessly. Um, and obviously the ability to scale resources in and out automatically, which is in most cases managed by Kubernetes. Um, we use Knative serving and Knative eventing, Knative eventing obviously for the event sources, Knative serving to stop and start containers uh, in the Kubernetes platform and it'll become important in the next slide to understand why we use Knative serving. The next thing is when we build a directive workflow as an example here is that Within the directive engine, there are certain constructs you can use, so switch uh, evaluations, um, logging, error control. But then every external communicate, well, any external plugin that you wish to call is actually a container that gets started in the workflow engine. So in this case, what we have is we've got a simple Terraform container that is passed to Terraform script. The output of that gets passed to a ServiceNow container, which creates a CMDB item if it needs to or it'll pass it on to an Ansible container, which runs an Ansible playbook, and it'll flow through right till the end. And at each of these points, you can call these containers to do something with the data that you produce within the workflow. 
But it's also really important to understand that you can really very quickly add your own containers within these workflows, which means it's platform agnostic code. Um, we don't care what runs inside the container as long as the container accepts JSON in and passes JSON back out to us. The next feature that we've built in is all the enterprise components that you would need. So authentication and authorization, typical identity brokering, social logging, um, open ID connect, OAuth, those kind of things for you know, really strict authentication authorization. We've built in policy control using the open policy agent. Um, and what it allows us to do is to schedule work, well, to control the schedule of workflows, control what type of containers we're allowed to run. You know, we can even control a container based on the tag that the container um, has within the container repository. Um, but it also gives ownership and control over who runs what, where, and you know, if if you don't want to run a workflow three o'clock on a Sunday morning when everybody's at home sleeping. Policy control will manage that for you. The last thing is the visibility. So all the metrics exported using Prometheus, tracing information via open telemetry and logging via fluid bit. Um, and these open standards are really well defined and it also allows you to bring in any of the monitoring management logging solutions that you use currently that supports those standards. So what is Directive? It is a workflow engine or orchestration engine. It's driven by the events in the environment. Um, obviously, you can schedule uh, so a cron job type scheduling or uh, active initiation of the workflow using the user interface or API calls. All the components run serverless. Uh, we use your containers. You can use our containers as well. We've got about 70 pre-built containers for well-known solutions like AWS and Google Cloud and all the private, pu public and private environments. Um, but we've really built these enterprise features in that make it useful and usable in enterprise environments. So how do we get started with Directive? Well, it's pretty simple. You can run Directive locally on your machine. This, it's just a Docker uh, image that gets run. Or if you have a Kubernetes environment predefined, you can install it, use a Helm chart. It's up to you then to define the workflows. You can use uh, some of the examples we've posted up on the documentation page. Um, but from that point forward, it really is about running the workflows and you know, crafting those workflows to suit the need and the use case that you have. As I said, the workflow engine itself is extremely simple to understand. The basis of the workflow specification is a YAML definition. Um, the workflow builder, the UI version, actually translates this into YAML. Um, the reason we chose to do that is because we didn't want people to only be dependent on a UI and YAML, since it's text-based, can be stored easily, managed, revision, uh, versioning, um, and it's backended by a Git interface as well, so which helps a lot. For the workflows themselves, JSON or binary data can be passed into the directive engine in the format of events or API calls, whatever you choose to use. And Directive will spin, will take this data and pass it to each of the containers that you specify in the sequence and the workflow that you identified. Directive will also pull these containers from the container repositories or registries that you've defined. And what you get at the end of the day is JSON or binary data out. It really depends on how the transition and transformation works within the workflow that you defined. So there is the Graphical Workflow Builder, and the Graphical Workflow Builder is a possible change in the way we do things normally. Uh, it really is dependent on the states that we've defined. You can click, drag, do you know, simple definitions like catch error. Uh, we also give the ability to configure each of these states in the UI. Um, but if you're like me and you prefer the YAML, the YAML editor is in there as well. We obviously do syntax checking and make sure that the YAML is executable before we store it in the directive engine. Um, this is all done from a single interface. So all the logging, all the inputs, the outputs, the flow of the data, the flow of the work data through the workflow is shown in the UI. Um, and the specification itself is extremely simple to use. It's well defined on the docs.directive.io page. Um, there's only a couple of states that you can use or should use. 
Uh, but each state is just a flow definition from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Now, as you recall, some of these states can be internally defined, um, while as an example, the action state can call the external container and run this container as part of the workflow. Like I said, there's a couple of ways to start workflows in Directive. Um, our preferred way is obviously Cloud Events because we really built this around this uh, concept of event-driven workflows. Uh, you can schedule it as a cron tab. It's defined within the workflow configuration itself. Users can actually initiate the workflow from the user interface or API-driven from external systems. And as I said, event-driven really is the way to go. So what we do have is this concept of active event listeners. So in this case, we have um, a workflow that's got an active event listener that listens for certain types of events, not just within directive, but also from external systems. And the really important feature here is that these workflows can actually initiate and create events to other workflows to asynchronously stop and start the workflows and wait for events to come back into the master workflow and carry on from there. So as I explained, the containers that we use, you can use directive containers, uh, the directive apps, GitHub repository has a list of all the directive containers we've built. Um, the real power is obviously using your own and using your own just implies that you have to have a listener on port 8080 that accepts JSON data. From that point forward, you can really do whatever you want to do inside the container. When you want to talk back to directive, just pass it back on port 8080 JSON. Um, we've even give you the, given you the ability to set certain headers within the communication to pass back errors or metrics or specifics that you want to log as part of the workflow. Um, but you can always take the examples we have in GitHub and you can build them from ours. Uh, and it gives you a pretty good starting point to develop these directive specific containers. Like I said, the process is extremely simple. JSON in, listener on port 80, JSON object, and the marshalling or unmarshalling of the JSON object is typically something you would do in the language of your choice. Uh, the great thing about containers, obviously, it's um, we don't care what runs inside the container or how it runs inside of the container, as long as you have the communication structures right between directive and that container. If you want to learn more, there is a GitHub repository uh, directive. You can always visit the blogs. Um, we try and update as often as we can with new articles, um, or you can hit the website. But if you want to get in touch with us, I suggest the easiest way to do this is just hit the Slack button. So we've got an open source Slack channel that you can join. And please join, ask questions, and um, yeah, hope to see you on Slack soon.